Hello, this is Charlene. We're going to find the domain and range of the points on this graph. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is the fact that your domain includes your x values and your range includes your y values. So for this kind of um, points on a graph, we need to understand that points on a graph can be counted. These points on the graph can be counted. Oops. I can't spell to today. Okay, so count, count it. C O U N T E D. The points can be counted. We have literally one, two, three, four. They can be counted four. We call this kind of graphing points on a graph discrete. This is discrete. So that is significant. It's different from like if you have a line, which is a bunch of points, a bunch of points. You literally don't know how many points are on there. There's a whole bunch of points. Or you can have a parabola. Again, you have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of points. But a discrete uh, graph of points means that you can count them. They're very distinct. Okay, so let's think about that. When we have this kind of graph, what we just need to do is identify the coordinates of each point and then it becomes very easy to understand what the x values are and what the y values are. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to give the x and y coordinates of that point. Well that would be on the x-axis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, negative 5, and it would be on the y-axis 1, 2, 3, negative 5, 3. Okay, this point right here is going to be on the x-axis 2 and on the y-axis it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so the coordinates of this point down here on the x-axis it's 1 and on the y-axis it um, coincides with 0 on the y-axis. So 1, 0. This point down here on the x-axis is going to be 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and on the y-axis it's going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So negative 4. Okay, so the domain are just the x values. So we're going to go and we're going to find all the x values. Negative 5, 2, 1, and negative 2. Okay, so whoever they are, they like us to put them in order from left to right. So I would go ahead and start with like negative 5 on the number line that would be on the left side and the next thing would be negative 2 so I'm going to put negative 2 next and then the next thing would be 1 and the last x value would be 2 and they also like us to put little brackets around so let's see if we can draw a bracket well you may be able to draw better brackets than that but they like us to do that okay so the y values y values are going to be um, the 3, the 3, uh, the 0, and the negative 4. Okay, so again, we are, we're going to start with from left to right um, or from low to high. So we'll start with negative 4. That would be the lowest number for the y values. And then we have 3. We have a 3 twice, but you do not need to write it twice. You only need to write it once. It only needs to be represented in our solution set one time. And then we also have a 0. And again, they like us to put little brackets around it to say this is our solution set for the range. Okay, so we need to ask ourselves, is it a function? Well, this can be um, found in two different ways when you have dis a discrete um, set of points here. We could look at the uh, vertical line test. So the vertical line test. So when I draw that vertical line right there, it only touches the point, one, that one point. It does not put, touch more than one point. So that passes the vertical line test. And when I Go and find a different vertical line which passes through this point. Also, it still only passes through one point. Vertical line through this point. That one's not straight, but that's okay. Um, it's only going through one point, 
And again, if I put a vertical line through this one, it's only hitting one point at a time. So the vertical line test says that it can only hit your graph one time, um, and that qualifies it as a function. So we would say, yes, that's a function. However, the other way, when you've got distinct, discrete points like this, is to look, are there repeating x's? And our x values up here, there's a negative 5, a negative 2, and 1, and a 2, but there are no repeating x's. So that's another way to consider no repeating x's means yes, it is a function. Okay, so hopefully that um, helps you understand how to find the domain of range for a discrete function, and we would definitely call that a discrete function because we have decided that it meets all the criteria for being a function. Okay, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and come back real soon. Okay, bye.